Water is the most abundant substance in the living system. It is said that the first living organism arose in an acrimous environment. We are going to talk about four weak interactions in aqueous systems. Water makes up to 70% of most organisms' body weight. However, for humans, it makes up to about 60% of our body weight. The transformation of one molecule to a different molecule inside a cell is known as a biochemical reaction. These reactions take place in an aqueous environment. Water is a polar molecule because it has one side that is positively charged and another that is negatively charged. It has a bent shape consisting of two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. Water molecules consist of hydrogen bonds. A hydrogen bond is a weak bond between the oxygen, which is negatively charged of one molecule, with a hydrogen, which is positively charged of another molecule. Oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. This results in unequal sharing of the electrons forming an electrical dipole. Cohesive forces make water liquid at room temperature and ice solid at colder temperatures. The cohesive forces in ice help it to resist separation. Hydrogen bonds are not only present in water, but many polar solutes form hydrogen bonds. For example, hydrogen bonds with a peptide group and another example being hydrogen bonds with a carbonyl group. Strong versus weak hydrogen bonds. The electrostatic interaction is maximized when the atoms are in a straight line forming a strong bond. Van der Waals is the force of attraction between uncharged molecules that happen because of permanent or transient electric dipoles. Dipole is the separation of less negative and more negative charge, which is created by the electric electron distribution within the molecule. Dipoles happen when, because the electrons are not fixed traje trajectory, meaning they randomly move around the nucleus all the time, and that results in that for one second, one region is more concentrated than the other, and that creates a transient electric dipole. Then the electron cloud of the two nuclei, nuclei begin to repel each other. Here you can see how one dipole of the one electron induces a dipole on the other electron and a weak dipole attraction of Van der Waals bond is created. Ionic interactions an ion is an atom with an electric charge. It is either positive or negative. A positive ion is called a cation and occurs when an atom has a deficit of electrons. And a negative charged ion is called an anion. Ionic interactions happen between these two oppositely charged ions. They attract towards each other and the force becomes stronger until they eventually will stick together and a considerable amount of energy will be required to separate them. This forms an iron pair which is held together by the electrostatic force of attraction, which has a positively charged area and a negatively charged area. Because water dissolves polar or charged molecules well, we can say that ions are hydrophilic, meaning they react and are attracted to water. So when an ionic compound comes in contact with water, let's say for example salt, which consists of a negative chlorine and a positive sodium, the oxygen molecule in water, being slightly negative, will attract to the positive ions, in this case, the sodium, and the positive side of the water, the hydrogen, will attract to the negative ions, the chlorine. This stabilizes the ions and makes the charges 
partially neutralized. At this point, we say that the ions have become hydrated. We can see this reaction happen when we dissolve salt in water. Hydrophobic interactions. Hydrophobic interactions describe the relationship between water, which is a polar molecule, and nonpolar molecules. Nonpolar substances have no polarity and do not interact favorably with water. We can say that they are hydrophobic, aka water hating. I bet all of you have seen oil being mixed with water. This is a good example of what I'm talking about. Oil is nonpolar, so it won't dissolve in water. When a nonpolar substance is added to water, the water molecules form a cage like shell around it. This is not energetically favorable because it limits the water molecules' ability to interact with other H2O. They have become constrained. If two or more nonpolar molecules are added into water, the nonpolar molecules will cluster together. This is energetically favorable because it releases the trapped water molecules and allows them to once more form hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. Amphipathic compounds contain regions that are polar and nonpolar. If they're added into water, the polar hydrophilic region interacts favorably with water, but the nonpolar hydrophobic region doesn't want any contact with water. It then forms structure called micelles. As you can see, all the hydrophobic groups are gathered together on the inside, hiding from the water. So to describe hydrophobic interactions in a short and easy way, it is the tendency of nonpolar molecules to stick together in water because this allows them to have minimal contact with water.